All right, what's up YouTube? Welcome back, it's Chris with Working Hands. Uh, I'm back again here with the uh, 1962 Bel Air. It's not gone yet, and I got some pretty good news. After about four months of messing around with the uh, Indiana Bureau of Motor Vehicles, um, I went to court, I talked to a judge, and I uh, got them to court order title back in uh, last December uh, 22 and it took until about a week ago and this is uh, mid-April took about it uh, till then for them to actually get me a paper title in hand uh, I had a packet of paperwork to fill out I had some inspections to get it was kind of a pain but I was able to get a title for it uh, it needs a lot of work and I filmed some stuff after I dropped off the court order title and uh, I kind of wanted to get started on it get a little bit of a head start I know I got a lot of projects going on a lot of things I got to get wrapped up uh, so some of the footage you're gonna see here or actually most of it uh, was filmed before I even got the title so uh, check it out there'll be more videos on this thing fixed the exhaust but uh, I had some camera issues and I lost the footage on that it's just straight piped no muffler at all sounds really good for a straight six um, the things I'm gonna do maybe in the next video or the floor pans uh, I gotta fix the trunk uh, I've got some gas tank issues um, but coming up in this video you're gonna get to see uh, a little bit of electrical uh, fixes um, <clears throat> brakes I did get brakes on the front of this thing a little bit of a spoiler alert I hope you hang out for however long this video lasts 40 minutes or so probably and uh, enjoy and come back and see me again so these two front spindles here came off a of 59 Chevy um, it's X frame it should pretty much be the same thing as long as it had the same front brakes both were sedans i think the, the 59 was a two-door um, but the diameters and things should be the same these are what i had replaced on my 59 wheel cylinders brake hoses they're all relatively new within like uh two years i think uh they're a little bit dirty uh the bearing race here got a little bit of uh rust on it i can probably clean that up it's probably not too bad the main thing is just get some brakes on here that work. I'm not even going to mess with the back brakes yet because I don't have any extra wheel cylinders for that. Uh, the master cylinder that I have for my 59, I don't have it out here yet. It looks slightly different than the one that's on here. Um, but it should mount up the same. And I, I, I don't know, oops, I may have to uh, change the configuration of the push rod. That one's got like a little thumb screw on the cap, and the other one's got uh, like a cap that screws down inside of it. Uh, but I think the metal line is about in the same place. That's the other thing. I don't really know how well the, the metal lines have held up over the years. This thing was pretty low in the dirt. I managed to get my scope down in the gas tank neck just a little bit and i'm picking up all kinds of goo and it, it's definitely like a, a a broke down shellac in there uh, i may have to run a temporary tank i don't think my scope works with my cell phone and that's what i'm videoing with so i can't really show you what that looks like i haven't figured out how to screenshot the video but I get the scope so far down in there and I run it into some goo and, and it covers the camera. And, uh, so, front brakes, uh, wheels and tires, because these would never make it anywhere, any kind of distance. I probably need to make sure that I can open this door from the outside. Uh, I did shoot some uh, lubricant stuff in there and it, catches just a little bit more 
but it's still I don't know what's up with that I may have to take the door panel off inside uh, it opens fine from the inside just grab the handle uh, I gotta get the lights working I don't even know if they'll even inspect that but I shot some uh, stuff that's supposed to get rid of rust corrosion on there because all of those uses the contacts were rusted uh, so if I can get those cleaned up to where they make contact again, I think my lights and signals and stuff may work. Um, and I'm sure, you know, I'll have to replace some of the wiring because I don't know how much of it the rodent's got a hold of. Uh, there's a wire here hanging down. But it's an aftermarket add-on. Looks like it comes through a hole in the firewall right there so I don't really know what that goes to uh, I did put water in this thing and I don't think the heater core leaked so it might be a plus but I'm sure it's full of uh, a nest so I'll probably end up having to take all that apart anyways if I want some kind of heat uh, I got a pan, a, a pan I got a plan for the floor pans uh, and all this is uh, uh, in the spirit of saving money and it it truly is going to be a hack job I've got a uh, parts a couple of parts cards and all I'm going to do is cut panels off the sides of them and you know we'll get a hammer and we'll, we'll beat them into shape and uh, you know use an anvil and bricks and concrete and whatever we can to shape them for the floor and uh we'll just try to get it i'm going to leave this six cylinder in here and try to drive it with this for a short amount of time uh, i've got to get me some of the short frame mounts they're made like triangles and i, I talked to my dad he may have some uh the upper mount well part of the upper mount so there's like this metal bracket here that bolts to the six cylinder engine it bolts too with three bolts the typical old school chevy rubber motor mount the kind that break on you if you got any kind of torque uh, these should bolt straight to the small block and then i got to get the shorter version of these uh, i saw online a guy said he used to try to run with the six cylinder tall mounts and it puts your engine on like a 20 degree angle and throws off your pinion angle with your drive shaft and Caused him all kinds of trouble, so uh, I can buy new ones for about $65, but again, I'm trying to save money on this build. Uh, I will go shopping at my dad's junk pile. Uh, he, th he said he thinks he's got a radiator. If not, I need to buy a heavier radiator for my 59 so I can take the real one out of it, the aluminum two core, put it in here. Uh, I'm trying to think what else um, temporary gas tank like I said uh, until I can get this one off I don't even know if it's got holes in it uh, I've not been underneath the car enough to know uh, the back end of this sags a little she's a little short and I kind of like a little bit of a rake on it so um, I've got coil springs that came out from underneath uh, my daughter's 68 Caprice and I think they're more heavy duty. I think they should be able to raise that up just a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix this trunk lock, but I don't have a key that works, or maybe I do. I do have a key that works and this just doesn't turn. But I don't know if you saw the other video, if you haven't, shame on you. But uh, this is separated so bad Sorry, I was looking at something else with the camera there, but this whole panel is so floppy. Uh, I'm going to have to patch this together along here, and then uh, I'll either make this lock work again, or uh, I've got some keyed locks that go for, like, um, arcade cabinets uh, I actually bought a, a bunch of them to do little locking cabinets underneath of an RV 
a couple years ago so I've got some of those left and I might be able to rig something up in there just to hold the trunk shut because uh, I really would like to drive this daily I'm gonna get a lot a lot of hate from people saying I should have restored this by the time I buy placement repanels re replacement panels uh, and try to weld them in and get it right and bodywork paint and and I'll, I'm gonna have way more money than what this car is worth uh, and I know that some people are still gonna be upset with that and and I'm okay um this is gonna be more like a uh, Mad Max kind of kind of thing and uh, I said in the previous videos I was gonna part this out somewhat believe it or not I'm still gonna do that um, eventually I plan to make custom headlight bezels and a grill so uh, this that stuff should be available at some point um, you know I'm a full set of 14 inch hubcaps because I'm not gonna use those uh, I, I just want something old-school I don't really have to worry about you know no shiny paint uh, I, I don't want it costing me 10 grand or even five grand and I'm gonna be totally transparent uh, some of this stuff I already had like you know this stuff I'd saved and yeah I paid money for those brake components down there and the master cylinder uh, you know I'm the stuff that I'm getting for free or for cheap or you know anything I gotta buy I'm gonna list it and I'm gonna give you how much I gave for the car on there actually I can do that now I'm pretty sure with tax when I bought this at that auction taxes and buyer fees was like two hundred and ninety seven dollars uh, and at this point uh, I've not even changed the oil in it I just got it running and drove it uh, so I'm pretty sure I don't have any money in this other than the spray lube that I use to free things up uh, and a little bit of silicone where I put the water pump back on I mean like hardly any money and it does look like that water pump leaked a little bit I don't know if you can see that fresh rusty look down there so I'll get it going again and, and see what it needs um, things I got to try to figure out I've got to relocate see this has got a big horseshoe bracket but I think the small block, I think the block comes out that far uh, where, where the ball bolts into the side of the block. So I got to get that ball without the bracket. And I probably got one if I don't, I'm sure my dad does. Uh, I've got to, and I've got another one of those from a 59. I got to get the accelerator pedal linkage for V8. Um... Let's see, the mounts. Uh, this generator, I don't, I'm not going to have bracketry to put it to a V8. So I think I'm going to go back and look how I did my 59. Um, and do a one wire alternator setup on it. It's, it's pretty efficient. It cleans up the wiring a little bit. I don't have to worry about my voltage regulator going bad. Uh, I will keep all these components. And I don't really plan to hack anything, per se. You know, just... Um, it's really, it's just going to be a, a daily driver rat rod, and I, I think it'll be cool that way. I, I'm going to try to get some uh, SOS pads and try to clean this up, because I think there is some paint left underneath that. I don't know. You can still see some white spots. So some of that might be paint. And it might just be rust stained. The roof is pretty much rust. And uh, we had a pretty hard rain the other day. And even with this hole, I think you can see that. And then up here in the gutter, uh, there was like not much water in the floor at all. It was actually just along the door edge where you could see the door seals are just garbage. Uh, I don't even know if I'll have carpet in here. I'm going to patch the floors and coat it really good. I may just do like a spray can rhino line. So uh, I'm going to gather up some parts, get the front end up in the air, get the wheels 
off and start looking at replacing brake components. If I get lucky, I can get the lines off of the hoses without destroying them. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, current situation. Got it up in the air. Got the drum back off. And I started putting some heat to this line. Yeah, it blew right through the line. So I'm going to say that probably needs to be replaced. It's actually just a little short piece. It goes right behind that flap. And right into that junction T there. So that's gonna get replaced. No problem, just extra work. So I'll get that cut off there. And I also noticed, and y'all probably noticed it too. Why does that have three bolts holding that in that drum on the face there and then this one does not these both came off the same 59 chevy either way i think i'm just gonna skip these i'll hang on to them for whatever reason uh well they may just go in the scrap pile i'm definitely going to keep the upper a-frames because they're in decent shape i'm probably just going to use the drums and everything off the off of my my 59 and they look to be, if they are the same as this, they look to be the same. So, sorry about all the uh, random sniffling and everything. It's like 30 degrees out here. I'm not a big fan of the cold. So, back to work. All right, now, friends and neighbors, this is what you go for, the small victories. And why a part-time hoarder is okay. This is the line off my 59. It goes from that junction T I showed you to the driver's side wheel uh, cylinder or hose. This is the one I pulled off. It's the exact same thing. So I don't have to make a line for that side. So saving a little time here. Also, this is the whole breakdown of my 59. And the shoes are good, the drums are good. So the bearings are good. All I gotta do is undo this spindle, which has kind of been beat on. You can see the oh, you can see the scar marks on it a little bit. And that grease is like uh, it, it could be factory grease, I have no idea. So we're gonna get that off of there. We're gonna inspect that inner race, make sure it's okay. If not, knock it off. Get the brakes set up on here. I gotta find the rest of the brake hardware. <clears throat> Excuse me, from my 59. Uh, that's the wheel cylinder on there. The brake hose. I put that line on. And this side should be good to go, ready to bleed. Uh, I broke the line loose from here. The line is still kind of caught up in the fitting, but I got some coil working on it right now. And uh, once I get this side over here kind of sewn up, put together, I might come back and try to break that loose a little more. Uh, I like taking a wrench and kind of tapping on the line right there next to the fitting and seeing if I can uh, just kind of send a shock through there and break whatever's loose holding it. And uh, maybe I won't have to use any heat when you push on the brake pedal, that cylinder's locked up. Uh, so it maybe could be rebuilt. I imagine there's quite a bit of pitting inside of it as long as it's sat. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is take this off. It's got two bolts, one there, one there. Should be able to slide this out. If the rod's the same that goes to the pedal, awesome. If it, Hopefully it comes out. Uh, otherwise, I'll have to undo it from the inside. If it's not the same, I've still got the rod from the 59, and it should be close. Uh, you know, I got a welder and, and some other tools if I had to modify something for it to make it the right length. So, keep plugging away at it. Okay, with the exception of that short little brake line that I broke up there, uh, this side's back together. Uh, so far, the only difference I've noticed between the 59 and the 62 is the crown of this spindle uh, is a larger diameter. And my 
my dust cap it just won't fit so I've got one dust cap for sure and I can pick up another one it's not that not that big of a deal I'll just measure it and make sure I got the right size uh, but that that's pretty interchangeable I'd say you know between you know, a couple of years and uh, man that's uh, I'm not trying to down Ford or Chrysler or anything like that but just the interchangeability of you know old school GM I could take this engine out and use those three bolt uh, mounting pads that bolt to the side of the six cylinder I could drop the six cylinder in a uh, 85 Chevy truck and you know bolt up the bell housing and and be ready to rock and roll so uh, just a, a real cool deal by GM to set stuff up like that okay back on the 62 I've already got the rear wheels swapped out. I had those two stock 15 by 7s sitting in the shed out back. They're ugly and perfect. Uh, the tires I had bought at a salvage yard uh, a few years ago. Had them for something else, never used them. So uh, I was able to use the original bumper jack. Uh, I had to oil it up. It was pretty... Pretty stiff, pretty rusted. I kind of cleaned out the trunk a little bit and I took the back seat out also. That box, other than that tube, that box is all the garbage that came out. Well, not all the garbage, most of the garbage that came out from underneath the back seat. Uh, I got another box over here that's full. It, uh, a lot of that came from the trunk and the back seat. Uh, I don't have much in the way of front wheels. Uh, I bought an S10 Blazer. These were on it. They're pretty rough. Uh, I kind of scuffed that one up a little bit, cleaned it up some. Uh, this one's uh, not as clean. I stopped cleaning because uh, of the set of four I found when I took the tires off of them. Somebody had drilled out one of the valve stem holes and put a tube inside of it. And uh, I didn't really want to run a tube in just one or, you know. So uh, these two have the valve stems in them. I got a couple tires that came from my dad. They're old. They're kind of dry rotted. They're just temporary for right now. Like I said, I got to kind of spruce this thing up the best I can, make it look presentable and try to convince the inspecting officer that it's roadworthy uh, I did finish up the brakes I got good pedal I actually drove it to where it sits uh, it fired up after priming the carburetor fired up pretty easy uh, the little line on the driver's side you know, I had a warning from my 59 that I had to replace. It was the same story on the passenger side. It is right there. It goes into the T-block. Uh, so you got a quarter-inch line that comes around here from one side to the other. This goes over to the T-block on the driver's side. comes out of the master cylinder. So you got a quarter-inch line here to supply this short 3 16 to the front wheel. And then this long 3 16 that goes to the back wheels. Uh, so what I did was, these are all straight threads because they seal on that flare. So what I did was, this is a 3 8 24 thread, so that's a 3 8 24 fine thread bolt. It's holding fine. I have no leaks from it. My focus is off. Uh, so... And eventually I will spring for some uh, rear wheel cylinders. Uh, the brake shoes on the on the rear were pretty good shape. Uh, so I'll probably just clean those up and use them. Had my wife help me bleed 
That's the 59 master cylinder. It actually has four bolts where the 62 had the bottom two bolts. Uh, but in 62, they still had all four bolt holes on there, I guess, for maybe if you had power brakes. So I just uh, mounted it up like it's supposed to be. Like I said, I got real good tight pedal pressure. So it'll make a neat burnout car, I guess, if that six cylinder returned those big back tires. Uh, so those aluminum ones are going on the front. And I'm getting ready to start on that now. The biggest challenge I think is going to be electrical and I can already see inside this headlight I had it on earlier I don't know if the camera will pick it up it's kind of purple where it's starting to burn out um, I had both headlights on I can't get any parking lights and I saw on this side These two wires right there, that, those go to the parking light. So something has chewed on the wiring. So I think this wire connects down to the parking light bulb. And then I'm not sure where. This is chewed through pretty thin. But I'm not sure if that, that's a ground, so. One of those wires, I believe, I, th I think the housing grounds. So I think one of these wires is for parking lights, which is probably the brown, and then the blue is for turn signal. So I'll have to get that sorted out. Uh, I can barely see down in between there. For that parking light, it looks like the wires are intact over here. So it could just be a bulb and socket issue, but I think have to take the bezel off to get to those side screws and get that lens off and see what I got going on. So, uh, this is actually like day two of, of messing with it. So, I had a lot of other stuff going on today. Didn't get as far as I wanted to. These doors are extremely stiff. See, there's still garbage in here in the back uh, this floor pan here is very very thin so I'm gonna need lots of replacement metal from my junk out back I'm gonna try to fix this up in here down in this corner uh, I just need to connect things again I'm not really worried I'll seal it up with some kind of sealer or goo, but as long as it's structurally pretty good, you know, I don't have to have full weld beads around the panels. Um, so, and I'll try to film more of what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Sometimes I'm kind of lazy with taking time to set up the camera or I get excited about doing something and just forget to. For the, fun, for the fun of it, I thought I'd show you how I grew up doing this. So, some tires are white wall, white letter, whatever, you know, you choose to put out. Um, so, on these, they're both black. Uh, looks like this side's got a little overspray paint on it. So, we'll make it the back side. So, I'll either take some oil, gear oil, old used motor oil whatever I got. Gear oil is better because it's thicker. But I'll kind of go around the bead. You just want something slick. And I'll usually take an old rag or just my hand and rub it in. Try to coat the whole surface. These aluminum rims were a little crusty in spots. So I kind of took some sandpaper around them, cleaned them up. So, if this is the backside because it's got paint on it, 
take this rim and just kind of jam it, jam it in there, get it started. So then, I take my dead blow hammer and I push down on it and just tap that lip as it stretches around and it drops. Now you got to tilt this over to one side because you got to get it below the bead, below the lip where the bead sits. So take an old screwdriver, it's pretty heavy duty. And you stand on there because you need to keep it below where it seats. And as you pull on this, that rim will kind of rotate around in there, sit back to where it needs to be. Again, this is where the oil helps. Just grab, a, you know, about three or four inches over, sometimes less. The last little bite's kind of hard to get usually. Just pull it together. And you're on. Now this tire's wide compared to the rim, so it kind of pushes out to seat so it shouldn't be any problem to just go ahead and put air to it and seat it to the bead uh, sometimes if the rim is wider than the tire it is naturally I'll hold it with the front facing out put my foot in and push and with that oil in there you can seat the bead at least halfway around sometimes more and then you'll have a gap out front so you just kind of lean the tire down like this and push that back in there and it make sure that valve stem is tucked behind the tire bead but you can start putting air in there and it'll fill up I swap tires around all the time so I keep a little plastic tray as a valve course Just like that it's seated now it's not up to pressure you probably only got yeah like 10 pounds in it right now uh, now if the rim is wider than what the tire sits on its own and you have to push from the back and then shove from the front and get it to seat sometimes putting the valve core in first uh, it only delivers a certain amount of air at, the, at a time uh, so you may have to leave that out, put the air in without it, so you got a higher rate of flow. It'll fill that tire up faster and push past if you do have a slight leak while you're trying to hold it together. Once it seats the bead, you can have your core ready, pop this end off, pop your air hose off of it, put your valve core in there and then finish filling it up. Most old school rides with a 15 inch tire are around like 215, 70, 16, something like that, like or 60, like what I got here. I'll usually do like 30 or 32 on the front. That's right, 32. It's gonna be my front girl. I'll get the other one mounted up and get them on there. Got some light in there. Uh, the socket on this side was non-existent. I don't know, somebody cut it out. This is a newer socket, so it needs to be grounded by wire. So I, I just took that bolt out of the bottom and scuffed it clean. And, and it doesn't fit exactly right in the back of the lens. This is what it looks like here. 
but if I touch this ground wire to a clean connection, which is hard to find, a pretty good light. <clears throat> this is just the parking lights. I'm still not sure about the brake lights. I'm kind of operating on my own here, so I'll have to check the switch and make sure it's still good. Um, I noticed when I turned the key on that flasher doesn't work uh, at all, So, but it could be because there was no power to any of the bulbs and maybe it just won't do anything then so i'm gonna keep wiring away here and and uh you know we'll just see if we can get lights on this dude uh i got the driver's rear door to open and close it's still a little sticky but it does work uh it's amazing how solid these things still shut uh the driver's door i'm gonna have to take the panel off and uh, get in there and see why that button doesn't seem to connect. Uh, I also don't have dash lights that I can tell. Oh, I got, oh, I'm not grounded, I guess, so that turn light is on. Yeah, well, hey, it, it, uh, it glitches when I hit the uh, signal lever. The key's not on, so it's not really gonna do anything, but. Uh, so maybe I uh, get some bulbs grounded and whatnot and maybe it'll work Okay, got the fuse block unbolted from the firewall Now this piece on the back here is separate. This goes through the firewall and that's where my harnesses for the lights and the starter and the, you know the, all the well generator on this thing they all plug into that so, and it's a separate part. So what I gotta fix, you can see how corroded those contacts are back here. It's, it's not pretty. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna have to do, which is even probably less pretty, is very carefully one at a time without getting lost. I'm gonna have to snip these wires and what I've got are multiple wiring harnesses. Uh, one of these came out of a Ford Ranger, a 2002, and the other one came out of this 96 Blazer. Uh, this is for another project, I hope. So, what I did was this was the oops, this was the under the hood fuse block. Uh, it had another section like this that had those big funky Let's See if I can get one out. It fell down here The really big flat fuses the first section had those in it so uh, The fuse block in the 62 only has six circuits that are fused um, I've got quite a bit more here but Let's see Seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like ten of them. Okay, so what I have done is cut some spade terminals in half because if you look at the ones that aren't used, they're kind of small. Uh, I know there's another piece that I can buy that clips on there, and I might do that later just for added security. But these do fit pretty tight in there. Uh, so what I've got to do is one at a time, one circuit at a time, uh, cut the wires on the back of the other fuse block and wire them one side to the wires that are sticking out here and the other side clamp it in my spade terminals. And that should actually get me power again. There was so much rust on that other fuse block that it was it was not going to make contact good. Uh, I had the, the taillights working. I actually had both taillights working in it. And um, sorry, I just had a thought. These might have the right sockets that I need. But um, I used some newer sockets that had a grounding wire instead of grounding to the lens uh, housing. And uh, anyways, I had both lights working, and then 
I touched another contact and everything went dead. The fuse block and everything. And I had that problem on my 59 and I ended up having to put a whole new wiring harness in it. All right, so anyways, with a little creativity and, and uh, some patience, uh, I think I can make this work and it's not gonna cost me a dime, just a little bit of extra time didn't mean for that to rhyme I'm starting to sound like pudding uh, okay so I will route out these uh, circuits and see what I can come up with okay <clears throat> Lost it through the hole in the floor. Okay. I think I can use these clips, push them out, and still use them on the blinker. Yeah, it looks like it's going to. I looked at this off camera just a little bit because I got really confused about which side was the power supply and which side was not. So apparently, if I can get this turned around where you can see it, this pink is the power. It supplies these two circuits here. One of these is the, my dog is barking, the heat and the AC, and the other is, um, Well, I did remember what it was. Radio. And uh, the radio light actually comes on, but the radio doesn't play. So this, I know, is hot for two circuits. So what I'm going to do so I don't get real confused is... Uh, plug this flasher back in. these two okay now this tan colored wire uh, this is for two other circuits hot and that is wiper and brake something I can't read it because the spray stuff I sprayed on there wiped it, most of it off and wiper and something else and I remembered that the tan was wiper because that was the circuit that fought me on my 59 and I ended up having to run new wires for all of that I had two wiring harnesses for that 59 so it made it much easier push that off there you now okay now I got red and green are my other two hots and I know the top one which is green was said cluster on it so um, I think that's also like park lights and, and stuff so I guess I'm going to try to run these into my new panel. I'll find one of the heavier wires on the back of that thing. I don't even know where I laid it now. Oh, it's right here in the seat. So this uh, orange and blue wire is a little heavier. So I'll probably hook it into the pink here. And then... This one that comes out, I'm going to have to split that because it runs two circuits. <laughs> Either way, I'll get it figured out.
I got stuck looking at these other ones. These, uh, there's some <clears throat> other spade terminals here that are auxiliaries on the front. So like this middle one here, it's actually fused. I mean, it's it's run through the fuse. But this one, uh, and I can't read what it was. It was probably like cigarette lighter. And then the one below it down here, um, it's, it's also doesn't have a fuse on it, but I don't know. Normally like on a cigarette lighter, the orange one is hot all the time. And then this one is probably with the ignition. If I had to guess, uh, I'll test all that. I think what I'm going to do though, these are. Uh, a weird kind you can like squeeze them together and kind of pull them out the back so I may try to leave them intact uh, with the exception of this middle one because uh, it's pinned to that fuse <clears throat> so I'll have to come up with something else on that that's the tan wire uh the tan wire is also hot uh let's see it runs the wipers on the 59 so it's hot with the key on um and it runs the wipers on this one too so wipers are only hot with the key on so i know i'm doing a lot of rambling here but i'm, I'm also kind of trying to talk myself through this so i don't forget what I'm doing because I can do that
right, looks like my wiring down here is gonna work. I don't have a light to show you with. But anyways, oh wait, let's try that. There we go, there we got a light. Okay, that's where we're at with my fuse panel down there. I got it zip tied to the bundle of wires. Um, there's still a little bit I gotta tidy up. I got brake lights in the back, tail lights in the back. The issue with turn signals is the brake lights are on the same circuit as the turn signal light. And when you move this around in here, if the contacts are no good or need to be cleaned up inside the steering column, then you have to take it apart and get it cleaned up. So it makes contact in the center position for the brake lights and then it breaks that contact for the turn signal. Uh, let me turn this light back off. And you can see the dash light started working. Uh, when I turn the key on, it says cold over here on the temperature light. Uh, the fuel gauge, it reads way over full. And I'm, uh, I'm messing with that currently. So I started dropping the gas tank. And when I broke loose this strap on this side, and by the way, that side was already rotted so bad, they had wired it, wired the strap together. But, of course, the bracket turned. And I guess this was rusted thin enough, it just poked right on through. I wish you could smell what that gas smells like. It's way, way broken down. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do about a gas tank yet. Um, I'm still waiting. Uh, I sent my title off, it's been a week. And I'm pretty sure the post office either forgot to put it in and send it, or it's been lost in the mail. So. If it's been lost in the mail, then I got a little bit of a problem because that was a court order title document and now I'm just going to have to get another one if, if that's the case. But hopefully not. Hopefully they just didn't put it in and then lied to me about it. I'd almost rather that. So now I got to get this filler neck loose from up inside here and I think it... Everybody revs when they go by. Um, get this filler neck loose and uh, I think it just slides through that rubber grommet I hope and we'll get this gas tank out uh, my dad may have another gas tank and I, all, I think it was almost similar in shape and if it was that would be fantastic yeah sure enough it came right out and uh, started looking right here and then I just kind of pushed and it just fell right down in there so She's not savable, you know, in the interest of saving money, I thought maybe I could patch that, take it into work and take it or something, but, uh, nope, she's too far gone, and a, a rodent was nice enough to chew through the wire, and I think the fuel line, too. So like uh, this one is the ground and then this one goes through like a, a loop up there if you can see that it's not real steady and it goes over here to this wire which comes out and I'm thinking this car was in the water pretty good for an amount of time um, and it was actually broken down gas it's still in that fuel line because when it come off it started leaking so I guess I broke that off but that piece of rubber hose and that thing's harder than woodpecker lips all right so this is the gas tank I got out of the 62 in daylight and it's still oozing a little bit uh, since it was parked in 83 I can only assume they used leaded gas in there I would have hoped they did anyways um, 
So I went ahead and pulled the sending unit because I was hoping I could use that again. Uh, if I do, I'm going to have to make some modifi uh, modifications to it. The little float, I'm sure it was one of those little brass canisters. It was completely gone. It's not in there. Uh, but I know I can get one of those pretty cheap on Amazon because I did it for a dump truck that I worked on. Uh, I tried to blow a little air through down into the sock just to see and then I kind of peeled this up because I'm probably going to have to fix this too and that's what it looks like inside there. And I don't remember. I thought the tube stopped somewhere back here. But this looks a little, a little crunchy chewy in there. So we'll have to see what we can get out of this. The pickup needs to be a lot longer anyways. Because I'll show you what I've got. So this tank is just kind of short and stout like a teapot. My dad actually had this tank. It's got the same size port for the sending unit. Pretty sure this is supposed to lay down in whatever car this came out of. But it's got the spout over here, the neck. And I think what I'm going to do is go through... This is kind of rotted out anyways, but if I come right through this seam, I think, with the original filler neck, it should be able to go pretty close through there. And then I've used radiator hose before. So if I turn it up and go through here, you can see maybe back in there. I just kind of got to go through that seam on an angle. And I think, I think it'll work. And then uh, I'll make me some straps and stuff to hold it in here. Uh, before I mount it permanent and get it filled way up with gas, and it does sit nice in this pocket. Uh, there's obviously some rust issues I need to address in this pocket and I don't really need to be welding around a gas tank so I'll get that tuned up first before I get it in there permanent but I'll probably go ahead and cut my hole through and get it kind of set up and I think that'll work pretty good I mean it really won't be any different than like a Mustang having a gas tank for the trunk floor or you know a pickup truck having the gas tank behind the seat uh, and this is too too tall this way to fit in the original position although it is about the right thickness if I was to put it underneath there I think it would hang down at or below the rear end and then you know you hit a rock or something at the very least you might knock a hole in the tank you know you get something that sparks jamming through there and you know you got an explosion I just I just don't think this car is going to accept an explosion. Uh, I was looking at the trunk skin. The skin has become detached. Uh, here's the ledge piece there, the, the wrap around. And uh, so I think what I'm going to do is get some bigger pop rivets and or stainless bolts and just kind of go around the edge every so often and make it look like an armored panel I, thought, I think that might be cool yeah there's some other stuff I threw some old rusted moons on there uh, other stuff I gotta address I got a radiator for it that may fit it is a little tall I think I think it might be an inch and a half taller than the one I got uh, but the width looks correct. So I got to take the old one out and we'll check that out and see what that looks like. Uh, I thought the horn might work because every time I would hit it, it would kind of make a little clunk noise. But um, it turns out the horn relay is what's making the noise. Uh, it's one of those things my dad's got a ton of them in a coffee can. Uh, that's actually where I got the gas tank and the radiator. Uh, he helped a friend clean out some guy's estate. He was an old hot rodder. And after he passed away, his family didn't want nothing to do with any of it. And so uh, my dad's friend cleaned it out. And he got to some of the goodies. So I 
just keep tinkering with it. Uh, I'm going to try to clean up this uh, sending unit down here. See what I can come up with. Like I said, it's going to have to be a lot deeper in the tank just to pick up down at the bottom. Uh, so we'll come up with something. Well, I got that crusty old sending unit to respond enough to get me just below a half a tank. I need to go back there and see where that little arm is adjusted, the float arm. Uh, it looks like it might still be trying to go down a little bit. And I'll, I'll show you what I've done to it so far. And it's it's a little bit on the horrific side. Okay. So I had to straighten the tube here. And that puts stress on that ribbon connector. Uh, I had to cut the tube off here because I drilled a hole through the sidewall where it was crimped and I straightened it out and it was filled all the way to about here with crud, just like a solid packed. I kind of straightened that leg out and bent that arm back up so I could put the little float in it. Okay, so I did a little more tweaking on it. Put the plug back on the top, wired it to my hot wire. Um, so I got this arm kicked out. It's like there's gas in the tank. We'll come up here. And we can see that there's the gas gauge, it's on full. And we know that it's capable of going over full. Okay, now we got the arm parallel to the tube, which means the tank is empty. With the tank on empty, we got the gauge down to about a quarter of a tank. And I think the more that thing moves around, because I can turn the key on and off, and it'll go down just a little bit each time. So I think the more that it kind of moves around and makes contact, I clean the contact up pretty good. But I think we'll be able to have a Good reading on our fuel gauge. Okay, I took the radiator out. Uh, I got them back to back here, checking the mounting holes. This one I took out, it's it's a little bit shorter. Let's see if I can get around here. I hold them up so they don't fall over. Okay, so it's a little bit shorter than the one that came out. And it was so rotten that the sides just detached from it. And I mean, you can. You can see I just push that with my thumb and it just falls off. And uh, man, it leaked like really bad. That stuff was just pouring out everywhere. The hose was so rotten that just, I tried to take the clamp off and it just ripped it. Uh, so it needed to go as far as like, trying to take it to a radiator shop and get it fixed. And uh, it's really not even worth the money. You know, I can get one for like a hundred and 130 bucks aluminum on on ebay or you know something like that and it's the champion brand that's what i've got in my 59 and anyways i was looking here because this one is taller uh, looking at the mounting holes the mounting holes are up higher on the other one as well which will help it sit down in there and because these mount to the core support it's not like they've got uh, a bottom that they have to sit on. Uh, but the only issue, this one also has ports for an automatic. Uh, but the only issue that I've seen so far is when you look at the top back to back, the water necks are on the same side. And, you know, so the top and bottom's on the same side on this radiator. And then the top and bottom are opposite on this one. So I gotta see, it looks like the same bolt pattern, same shape and size as a small block Chevy, that water neck. So I don't know if I've got one that does the swivel deal where I can turn it over towards this side, which would be the driver's side. Or if I can just use the standard one that kind of points that direction and you know, get it get it in there somehow uh dad's got a ton of radiator hoses save me a little money there maybe and uh and you can look maybe 
down in there and see the difference in how clean one is versus the other. Uh, even this, there's a little top bracket to keep your fingers out of the fan blade on, on the old one and it just broke off. So we're not 100% sure this black radiator is any good. Like I said, it came from that guy's estate. Uh, so we'll just have to put it in there and fingers crossed. It does look like this bracket, uh, this top bracket over here has been reattached at some point. But it is in the same style as the other. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of stick it in there and see what it looks like. Okay, so on this 62, I lost a little bit of my footage. Sorry about the lighting. The sun's going down. I got that radiator in. And with those bolt holes being just a little bit higher on the bracket, it sat it down just a little bit more. Um, it still sits taller than the original six cylinder one did, but uh, I put the radiator cap on, put a little grease on top of it, uh, just a few little globs of it, and then I closed the hood and I didn't hit anything. Uh, I've got some wiring here that I'm going to have to kind of clean up, where I just kind of twisted them together just to get it running for the video. Uh, <clears throat> After sitting for a little while, the axle seal on the driver's side, on the rear end, started leaking. So I'm not going to mess with the rear brakes just yet. The front ones do pretty good stopping it. Um, it fires right up and runs. Uh, starts pretty easy. Uh, the horns were all froze up inside, so I got this horn from like a... 49 Chevy and the horn actually works now we'll have to um, melt the door I will have to pull this steering column apart the steering wheel off um, I got brake lights working but not turn signals and there's an issue with the uh, contacts inside the steering column so if I move it around too much, move that lever around too much, then it, uh, I lose contact and I lose my brake lights too. That's the horn. Um, of course the gas gauge still doesn't work right. I don't have the sending unit set up. I think um, I'm probably going to end this video here for now. Uh, my electrical, more things just keep coming on. Uh, we got dash lights now. I think I went over that already, but uh, I lost the uh, footage on doing the exhaust. I hacked up some pipe off of some other stuff. Uh, so actually, all I had was just about six inches of the lead off from the manifold. And so I just cut up some other exhaust pipe. Some of it was off of old Ford minivan. Some of it was off of a Ford Ranger. And uh, now this piece back here is the original. And all I did was splice it right there. The welds look horrible because I didn't bother cleaning the pipe any. But it's good and tight. It sounds pretty decent. video here uh, find me on Instagram YouTube of course if you're watching it there like and subscribe send me a message uh, there'll be more on this car for sure I'm gonna try to get it ready to go for a car show that's at the end of May it's the Sunday of Memorial weekend and um, it's all kinds of rat rods and things like that. It's a pretty big show in Louisville. Uh, so if you get a chance, look it up, check it out, come, come see the cars. Uh, it's called Beatersville. It's beatersville.com. And uh, I'll put the website down in the description. So until next time, hope you and your cars stay tuned.